what up, what up, what up? Everybody check in. I know I didn't do roll call, but uh, suit to all the chat niggas in the building. Y'all can hear me? Should be on good. I haven't been on in a while. Truthfully, just because I've been putting in hard labor. Yo, y'all know when y'all know a nigga fat when like I was sweating for the last five days. I'm like, yo, I had to lose like 10 pounds. <laughs> like for real. Like I really, I was like, yo, I've been I've been working hard. <laughs> okay. I've been sweating like a motherfucker. I'm like, fuck. I gotta drop some weight. I ain't gonna lie. I've been putting work. But anyway, you know, I've been really busy uh getting everything set up, building things like actually by hand, putting things together. You know, I'm very hands-on with everything I do, all of the equipment that you know um as it pertains to my new studio at my headquarters space for uh off the record i picked out myself i put together myself i configured myself i did everything myself you get me listen I, i'm just I, i've always told y'all like i believe in knowing how to do it yourself even if you employ other people to use those items especially if you're paying for it anyway um today was the first episode of off the record and the episode I don't think is up currently. I think it's down. You know, me and Spotify have been talking about it um, throughout the day. Uh, first of all, I, I'm going to tell you what what's wrong. So if you had an audio issue and you would only have an audio issue, I, I their engineers came back to me and told me it's fucked up for iPhone users who are watching and listening to the episode. So if you're on your PC, if you're an Android boy, or I don't know, if you're listening to the podcast through the, 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 the new Soldier Boy console, you are straight. But iPhone, which a lot of people are on iPhones, had a problem. Um, they gave me an update like two hours ago. They did tell me, they said, act, the episode might disappear real quick. We're at, we, we converted the file you sent us to some new shit. And we think that should be fine. It's going to go down off the page for a while, but it will be back, back up, okay? Um, they told me that like two hours ago. I don't. Uh, I, I would imagine in a couple hours it should be up. Again, I'm not, I'm not upset or anything like that because it's a lot of growing pains. If you, if you don't know, I've launched my official podcast. I'm really excited. I, I'm extremely tired, so you might not see the excitement really, you know, exude um, out of me. But, you know, this was, I put so much work into this. I did all this for you, like countless hours, you know, salute to my agent, you know, salute to UTA, salute to my lawyer. They put in so much work just negotiating with Spotify. We got a deal. I told you I when the deal was. And um, we, you know, Spotify, was very gracious enough to say, hey, listen, Ak, you could handle all the production elements of it. And I said, great, because I do everything myself. And truth be told, like, I could have I could have just said, I I'm going to do my podcast right as I'm sitting here. I just won't put it on stream. And they would have probably been cool with it. But I wanted to put the production value up. I invested, like, you know, well, I went over, I, I made a budget for myself. I went over it because I wanted to have something dope, you know, I ain't got to mince words. In, I, I looked at every podcast set or wherever these niggas record out of. They, they closet, they, they room, wherever the fuck they record out of and claim that they popping up in this shit. And I'm like, there's a reason why academics is just the number one nigga. I'm going to shit on all you niggas. Like, that's a fact. So any nigga who got a podcast, that's a fact. If I I spent, spent about 200 grand to get my studio together. I'm like, I'm shit on all y'all. So fuck all y'all niggas, number one. Number two, um, so that that's just that, but I really care about this, and I really care about this for my audience because I think we just build a, a great brand, and I'm going to actually segue into something. That's the reason why I played that Chief Keef War song. It's what pissed me off a little bit. Not, not really pissing me off, but it, 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 it's interesting. It was on my mind, and I didn't actually cover on the podcast today. But still, um, yeah, so I put a lot of time in building the studio, it's a studio that it could, like, I get podcasts is mainly audio only. There's a video element for my podcast. But the way we built the studio, we could literally shoot a TV show in there. Literally. And I'm proud of that because that's the direction I'm moving in. I'm moving in the direction of higher quality shit, being able to 
capture and 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 put together you know like like I, I i love you guys so much for like being able to tolerate me with a weird this is like a hundred dollar webcam right here like yeah, i remember when i was doing this shit and it was i was just there's a wall behind me or something like that i appreciate y'all for tolerating all this but we leveling up too you know what i mean we leveling up you know uh, this year and and the years to come, we gonna go to market with a lot of pilots. We gonna go to market with a lot of, you know, ideas and productions that we're gonna get sponsored this and third. And let me tell you this: just, I'll put everybody on notice. Whatever media houses that's up in the in the shit, and I'm self funding this. Complex. Who else is popping? Like the the goal was always to be the, y'all competitors. The goal is never to be beyond the y'all, straight up. So, you know, I have a great relationship with Complex, by the way, but still. From day one, walking in that building, I studied everything in that building. I took, I know what to to take in terms of, okay, this works and what didn't work. I only came here to dominate. So the podcast space, other content space, I only, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm y'all know me, I'm a, I'm a nigga who came from Jamaica. I used to be walking around barefoot. I ain't come in this shit to be just like kumbaya. Niggas got rich a long time ago. This is about straight domination, okay? So I'm very focused on this podcast pace, and I'm sorry that I neglect y'all on the streams at times. I really, I really am. I'm sorry. Because I want to stream and talk to y'all and bullshit and, you know what I mean, be off my liquor every night, but there's times I got to put work in. And this week, I'm going to stream more. Every time an episode's out, I'm going to be on stream with y'all. You know what I mean? Um... I know the episode isn't currently up. It's probably going to be up in like maybe a few seconds, a few minutes. But 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 some people kind of watch some of it today. I'll give y'all in. Y'all know I'm going to always be transparent with y'all. I was going to have Elliot Wilson as my first guest. He canceled on me. Keep it on it. You know, Elliot, I love you so. Um, he had hit me. He, he had hit me like he was supposed to come on the stream for CLB. Um, he told me that Drake invited him somewhere so he couldn't, you know, wasn't available to make the stream. Plus, I was drunk anyway. I was gone. CLB stream, I was gone. And I fell asleep, right? So he was like, yo, act. Let me pull up to the podcast. I'm like, I right, pull up to the podcast. Um, I said, fine. I'm about to launch. Cool. You could pull up. We could tape some shit, right? And, um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and no, no. Yo, this isn't to spread no hate against somebody. I'm, I'm being transparent with y'all. I'm, I, this is going to be the process. Like, I read, I've read, i read everybody. I know y'all being like my inbox. I don't know if y'all think I don't read it. I read every one of y'all shit. Like, especially constructive criticism. I'm hard on myself. I'm crit- I'm a critic of myself, too. So, like, yeah. I'm, and, and I'm going to give you the real about today's episode. Like, today's episode, I just called up a couple of friends. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I was a little bit dissatisfied with, with today's episode. I'm going to tell you why. I love Leaf. And I had someone else on in NYK. I love him, too. You know, but what I realize is that conversations sometimes that, you know, I might have with friends, like off camera, and I'm like, damn, this could be good on camera. I forgot the learning curve that I even had to learn. Remember I told you I went on Everyday Struggle and I was with Joe? And by the way, salute to Joe, he called me today. Um, Remember I told you uh, the learning curve I had with Joe where, Yo, I was killing YouTube. I was doing my thing. I felt like I, I was seasoned in learning what my cadence, what my tone was, kind of my delivery, this and third. And I went on everyday struggle, and I never was really on camera. You know, I never had to really go back and forth with someone and also have a time limit, this and third. And, you know, I had to learn. You know, I, I, I felt like after three years, three and a half years, actually, of everyday struggle, I learned a lot. So, um... Uh, Elliot Wilson couldn't do that episode and I was kind of left scrambling a bit, right? Because by the way, if you don't know, I don't have a co-host. I'm not going to have a co-host, okay? I'm going to have reoccurring people. You might see people like uh, what I'm kind of setting up, I'm going to get certain people who I really think are good and they'll be on for a week. Like they, they'll be on for the, the non-guest episodes. So if I'm just interviewing someone, I'm just interviewing someone, right? But they'll be on for the Monday and Friday episode, so you'll see them twice or whatever, right? So, and, and and the good people that y'all like, I'll bring them back more often. But it's not a show where it's like, you know, th- this is my shot to show people that 
you know, and I and I guess it's also a little parallel too. You know, I see. I see um, you know, by the way, salute to my man Charlemagne. He's doing you know his show as well. I want to shout him out. And he got his show, uh, The God's Honest Truth. That's on um, uh, Comedy Central right now. That's his shot, his opportunity to get into the late night world. He wants to do it. He does a great job on Breakfast Club. People love him there. People love him on his podcast, Brilliant Idiots. But he wants to do late night. And I think this is an opportunity where he gets to kind of do it his way. And I'm going to be honest, in a podcast space, this is an opportunity I get to do it my way. And my way is, is, hey, I understand I have an audience. I love you guys. But I'm trying to figure out whatever. So, like, even today I was like, hmm. The homies are cool because I know there's history there. There's chemistry. But number one, I'm talking a lot about the music industry. And they're not that familiar with exactly what I'm talking about. Because they're outsiders, right? Um, Secondly, they're not broadcasters at least to the level where, you know, they understand that this isn't just a conversation. This is where you're having a conversation that others are listening to. So, you know, I'm, I'm really tough on myself. And I really like, I, like today's episode, I was like, you know what? I'm glad I launched it. Um, but there's a lot of improvement to go. Just a lot. Just a lot. You know what I mean? And of course, like, I, I like if I, I see some of y'all saying like me, I could sit down with anyone. Right. But that's not going to be the, the entire episode. Like I, I some people, some people say, yo, you should do, do episode Wale, do episode. That's cool. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, I want to have round table discussions with people who love this hip hip hop culture, know a little bit passionate, could eloquently state their points, defend themselves and understand that this isn't just about getting your points off because I was like that at first in on 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 our everyday struggle. It's also about um, the viewing experience. It's also about the audience. It's also about not going in circles, all that type of stuff. Without the first couple of months of everyday struggle, I was just only hell bent on getting my point across. I remember the desk was just trying to like, yo, this is going in circles. The viewers might get bored, but I kept looking at her like, no, I'm trying to prove my point. Fuck your point, motherfucker. Like, nigga, this is entertainment as well. Anyway, I I, I said that to say, um, so I had to kind of scramble around to get a a first episode done. And I shot another episode, and you guys are gonna see it on Wednesday. But I didn't want to leave with that. Off the record. It's going to be just my vision. I'm hell-bent on it. And when I mean my vision, I remember before I took off on YouTube, I said, if people will only fuck with me because I have a guest they like, I don't want it. Because you're going to chase these motherfuckers around who are unreliable. I was getting people cancel on me and cancel on me. And I, I, I'll tell you why I'm telling you this. So Rich the Kid is on that next episode. I don't want people to think this is a guest show. I don't want people to be like, oh, let's see what academics got going on and who he's talking to. No, I'm going to have conversation. And if you're not interested in just conversation and you're only interested in who is talking or who I'm talking to, this ain't the podcast for you. Um, Yeah, I see some people saying about the audio on today's episode. The audio is fine. What I submitted... We listened to it. It's fine. The, there were some issues with transcoding and 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 some other things that you know the internal ingestion of the of the episode on Spotify side. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and, and put any blame anywhere. Spotify and my partners there, they, they've like we have been really working hard at this. And trust me, I could tell at least for the immediate team that's working with me on Spotify side. I have a partner manager and a couple other people that fall within, you know, um, that rank and they care a lot. So I'm, I'm not going to sit here below. Yo, they want this shit to be good, you know, but obviously this is the first time you're doing something. It's going to be a little bit of hiccups. So 
I'm taking my bumps and my bruises. You know, yo, it happens in life. You never tell y'all, you know, and, and I, and, and, let me look it up right now. You know what video was supposed to go on my, like, remember when it was just all about YouTube and everything? It, it felt like it was a, a views race and a subscriber race. Six Nines label came to me and said, let me look. I forgot. It was like, I think I did a favor for them. And they were like, yo, we're going to do a favor for you. Six Nine, Billy, they wanted to premiere and put on my page. I had the file. They gave it to me. Look at this. 412 million views. This is 2018, right? I don't know what was happening at that time, but I had like random strikes. So I had two strikes on my account at that time. And when you had that, it was like community guidelines or whatever. You couldn't upload for like two weeks or like a week or whatever it was. Like it restricted you. And I remember they gave me the file saying we've greenlit or we've like whitelisted your account to upload this. And I'm thinking, well, if I put this up, my, damn, more people, people who just like this music, they are going to check out my channel too. But I couldn't do it. And um, I remember saying to, to his label, I said, yo, my channel is like messed up. And they try to use their YouTube connects, but 6ix9ine was really trying to put out music on a Sunday. There was no YouTube people working at that point or YouTube people that the music industry had connects to. And it was basically, they, they said to me, they, yo, they said, yo, do you want us to try to push him to delay his video that you could get your channel straight or should he put his video out? with other options and obviously the other option was world star i just looked at it i said you know what this wasn't meant to be and i'm not gonna hold up your opportunity and i told him i said hey it's fine i'm not mad you can put it up on world star and that's why billy's on world star it would have been on my page and um i say that to say even when it comes to this current situation with you know, the podcast episode for today, even though it's our launch, you got to take your lumps and your bruises. You know what I mean? Sometimes not everything works out the way you want, want it to, but trust me, in the end, it's going to work out the way you want it to, if that makes sense, right? So um, I use that as an example, but again, I wanted this first episode to be blah, blah. You know what I mean? I had like... I had a whole meeting with them about, like, I was like, yo, okay, um, I'm going to be with, talking with Elliot. Like, I have a few, like, things I kind of want to bring up, this and third, and it's going to be this huge thing, and it, everything fell apart, whatever, whatever, cool. Anyway, w w we did this episode. Um, There's a Richard Kid episode coming on Wednesday. Um, We still got to edit it. I'm going to be honest with y'all. You don't, you don't tell what happened on that episode. By the way, Rich reached out to like do an interview. Like he reached out, like, yo, let me come on the podcast. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I wasn't really trying to say much. I I I I don't wanna I don't wanna uh, um spoil it, but it's coming out Wednesday. He walks off set. <laughs> he walks off set. Okay. He walks off set. Um I don't know. Like Y'all tell me, was I wrong or something? So, I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Or I'm going to tell you part of it. So, I'm asking him questions. Like, yeah, I told him, I'm like, yo, of course, we were talking about some music and stuff. But, like, I'm just asking him, like, yo, we haven't seen Richard Kidd, like, have an interview or whatever in a while, right? So, I asked him about everything. How's Famous Dex? How is this? How's your relationship with, with, with Young Boy? How's your relationship with, well, he's putting out music soon with um, Wayne. I, and you know what I mean? And of course, I got to ask the obvious. So I was like, yo, I asked about Uzi. And I asked him, I think, I think I was like, yo, hey, you know, so what's going on? Like, why we see, keep seeing on TMZ, you getting robbed? Like, what's going on? And he walked off. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He did come back, though. He came back. He came back. So, but, but he walked off. He wasn't, he wasn't, he was not enjoying, and I'm probably going to have a title like that. Like, yo, he was not enjoying that line of question and came back, talked a little bit more about music and ended. I don't know. I don't know. 
It's off the record, though. Leo, come on. Yo, you can't want to do academics podcast and think we're about to talk about straight music. Like, come on. You got to, like, you got to, like, think that, yo. And by the way, I even told him, like, after he walked off, like, because I approached him, I said, yo, Rich, like, you know, if I ask you some shit that you really, I, like, I don't know what might be behind, whatever, right? If I ask you some shit, you don't talk about it, you could just dodge and weave out the question. Like, you could just be like, nah, man, man, man. your next question, all right, whatever, whatever. And he did the next question, like, what, one or two things, right? But, I don't know. Salute to Rich Kid, though. He, he got some new music coming with uh, Lil Wayne. Yo, Rich is a finesser, ain't he? Somebody said I should have had that today. Sp Spotify hit me and they wanted me to have that today. Because th th I shot that yesterday. Truth be told. Bro, like, somebody said I'm spoiling my pocket. Yo, chat. I'm going to be honest with you. I love the podcast, clearly, right? But we're going to have, the, the reason why you come to the stream is to hear the shit that's behind the scenes, bro. Like, like some stuff I try not to, but, bro, tomorrow in the morning, I'm putting up pictures that Rich the Kid is on Wednesday. Like, come on, like, we're not good. It, it, it's, it, if you think I'm spoiling it, it's only a couple hours I'm spoiling it because we're putting out a clip tomorrow of him walking off or some shit. So relax, you know what I mean? It's not that serious. You know what I mean? Um, if, if anything, y'all should y'all should appreciate that that whatever this wall of like the people who are supposedly on my side and the audience, which is you guys, I just break it down. Like, who cares about it? I'm gonna just tell you exactly how shit went down. Like, you don't have to guess. There's no mystery. There's no conspiracy theory. I'll just tell you the fucking truth, right? Um, but anyway, I you know uh, there's some good moments in today's episode though. I really like that Jay Z discussion. You know, I, I did some Googling, and maybe I should have did the Googling before. Because it, the, the, the episode's titled, Who Tried to Kill Jay-Z? Yo, who's e Elias Connell? What the hell? This thing is sent us a Bible verse. God bless you, my brother. Um, the You know on Love All, Jay-Z's talking about niggas try to kill me. But I will still drill them, like, and I got a billion of t Like, I was like, I thought it was just all Cap he was talking about. I'm going to be honest with you. Bro, Jay-Z hasn't rapped anything about some current, like, street shit in a long time. Starting in, like, 2016, 2015, he was rapping about art. The nigga was almost like an art dealer or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, he was rapping about Blue Ivy, bro. Yo, I kid you not, Blue Ivy, like, him and Blue Ivy was going back and forth in a verse. She was like, yo, he was like, a booyah. And then she was like, goo goo ga, ga. Like, something like that. Bro, I don't even know what the fuck. That's when I tuned out. I'm like, yo, this thing is rapping with his, like, newborn? I'm done. She's drooling on the mic? I'm good. I'm, I don't hear that. I'm sorry. Like, and again, you know, I listen to music for just how the state of mind I'm in. I, like, bro, I just... You know, I, I I I don't care for that. I don't care for that. You know, you know, nothing against his family. I just don't want to hear that. I want to hear you popping bottles, fucking bitches, cheating. You know what I mean? I want to hear. I like degenerate shit. Like that's gonna sound bad, but I like hearing degenerate shit. I don't want to hear how happy you are the first time I see your smile. No, I ain't want to hear that, bro. I don't want to hear that. Anyway, uh, we had a good conversation on the podcast about that. Um, cause it, it was, it was actually YK who brought that to my attention. It was like, yo, act, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. The, cause he writes music. He said, yo, the way how that nigga's passionately talking, the way how he's passionately talking about, um, like, like he, 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 he's conveying that verse. This is some real shit. This is not fake. Cause I thought he was just doing rapper cap. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, shit, he's getting back into his gangster bag. Or maybe he was reminiscing on, like, some super, super past shit while he was in Marcy Projects with the 92 bricks he lost. Who knows? But, um, yeah, I thought it was that. And um, I did some Googles. Look like it might have been, like, some others. I don't know. I don't know. But, but anyway, there was a good conversation about that. Yo, recently, I, I'm going to get to this Gabby Petito shit, and this got nothing to do with hip-hop, but I am into this shit. This shit is like 
a new season of Money Heist. By the way, did anybody watch Money Heist in here? Money Heist got me fucked up. Money Heist has got me fucked up. I hate the shows where the writers, because they see the show is popping so much, they feel like they have to go above and beyond to please the audience. And you know how they got to go above and beyond? Because they're trying to shock and wow the audience. You do the shit that people would think the that would be the last thing on their mind you would do. Like, I don't want to give spoilers for this stuff. But I, I guess Money Heist might be ending anyway. Like, maybe like another half a season. Bro. The person that died in this last, like, you know, update of, of, of the season, you, you can't kill that person. It's like watching Iron Man and Iron Man dies in the first two minutes. Who the fuck we finna watch? Pepper? It's like now, like, like no disrespect. And by the way, I'm black and I'm proud. But... I just seen a new Captain America movie with the black guy picking up the shield. Nigga, you the sidekick, dummy. We don't want to see you. We want to see the guy. The guy can't die. You could die. This is the movies. The, this is the movies. This is the movies. We don't want to see the our favorite die. We want to see everybody around the favorite dies. Because we want to see how the favorite go react. I seen the black guy picked up the shit like, well, I got to do it now. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Because Thor, that shit from this nigga. What the? F Iron Man, yo, where you at, nigga? Sp somebody grab this shit. We, like, what's the name of that black actor? No disrespect to him. We don't want to see him. It's like when, what's that nigga name? What's that? And by the way, he's the actually, he's the guy that that replaced another guy i forgot his, but he was also in the iron man movie we're in the iron man suit we don't want to see you nigga we only want to see what's that nigga name the, the only iron man that we really care about now like bro we don't want to see like what the fuck <laughs> that nigga from eight, yo, cold sounds. He's from Eight Mile. That nigga is from Eight Mile. But that's Papa Doc. Wait, that's not Papa Doc. No fucking way. Yo, I'm so disrespectful. I'm gonna type in Google fake Iron Man, <laughs> fake Iron Man, or black black dude Iron Man. I could do this, people. I'm black, okay? Black dude, Iron Man. And by the way, chat, it, 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 allow me, give me a month to work my magic at off the record. I want it to be as casual as this, as free as this. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I was telling somebody, I'm like, yo, I watch my streams because a lot of times after my stream, I go to sleep. And sometimes I even forgot what the fuck I said. But I watch myself back in the morning. And when I watch myself back in the morning, I'm like, Damn, that motherfucker is funny. I be laughing at all my jokes. I don't know if that's weird. I watch myself on YouTube, like, salute to drill, and I'm like, yo, this nigga is hilarious. I know it's me, but I'm like, this, this shit's great. You know what I mean? So, like, uh, I think maybe, I don't know if that's obje uh, objectivity, because I usually cringe at some of the stuff that I'm, I feel like is mid that, that I've ever done. I'm like, eh. like, I can't watch the first, like, even though a lot of people love me and Joe together, like the first half of me and Joe together, I can't watch it. I'm like, ah, this was bad. This was so bad. I was so bad, right? What's the nigga name? Yeah, this nigga right here. This dude. This is this Papa Doc? This is not Papa Doc. No fucking way. This is Papa Doc. Yo, by the way, oh, this was the nigga, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle, we don't want to see you with no fucking iron. Yo, get, nigga, when I seen this shit right here, I'm like, yo, listen, man, I'm all for equality, Black Lives Matter, but get this black-ass nigga the fuck out of the, the Iron Man suit. Nigga, 
Make up another character, nigga. This ain't you. Sorry. There's only one I ever. This is only one Iron Man, bro. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. You know because you know a uh, uh, guy rested dead with um 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 what's the guy who played um um Black Panther. I'm looking forward to see another Black Panther, but I'm gonna be honest with you. It can't be anybody. Michael B. Jordan got to be the Black Panther now. I'm sorry. He got to be Black Panther. Nobody else. If you bring in another black dude to be Black Panther, I'm going to be tight. There's only one Black Panther, bro. We live generations. Like, I'm going to lie. You, for me, Logan or, or, or Wolverine was this nigga for the longest. Like, I couldn't even watch him in other movies because I kept looking at him like, yo, that's Wolverine. Logan Wolverine. I don't, I don't even know this thing is real name. I just call him Wolverine. I don't know this thing is real name. His real name to me is Wolverine. His hair kind of looked like Wolverine. I don't know this thing a real name. It's Wolverine. So when they try to switch Wolverines on us, I'm like, no. This, and by the way, I think they kind of know this. Any, wait, he died? Wait, I said R.I.P. He died? Wait. Hugh Jackman? He ain't died. Oh, yeah, I told him about the character. Man, Wolverine never really dead, man. Yo, Grand, man, Grand, stop fucking with me, man. Yo, Grand, stop playing, bro. Like, nigga, Wolverine just come back all the time. That's just how it goes. That's how it fucking goes. Like, Wolverine, nigga, Wolverine got, like, 20 lives. Like, come on, man. Nigga, I remember watching this movie. I remember watching this movie. Like, like, how badass and gangsta is this shit? I ain't gonna lie to you. But, but I don't get that married to the character. But I was married to the Spider-Man character. Spider-Man. Spider-Man movie. Tobey Maguire. Toby, I think that was the guy. Tobey Maguire. And really, I still think he's the original Spider-Man. Now, I know they're trying to get these other niggas to be Spider-Man. But to me, this nigga right here, this is a Spider-Man. This is the OG. Now they got three of them, so they got. So this is. Uh, uh, um, wait, y'all can't see it. Hold on, let me make sure. This is the OG right here. Then this dude, I don't even know who the fuck this is. Who is this guy? This guy was just odd. Get this thing the fuck out of here. But I'm gonna be honest. I like this other guy. This guy over here, he kind of cool. He kind of cool. Kind of cool. This guy was a mistake. You got to be a little nerdy to play Spider-Man. Like, for example, tell me what's the name of the Iron Man dude. And by the way, I'm only forgetting it because, like, I'm, I'm sorry, movie people names are not the top. But, but I know his name really clearly. Iron Man, what's his name? Like, his, if, I, oh, Iron Man. By the way, I changed my keyboard out. Uh, um, uh, I, I had issues with my other one. What's this guy's name again? Y'all about to tell me right now. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, yeah. He's the only Iron Man. Bro, like, his attitude is Iron Man. I've watched his interviews for other movies. I've just watched him talk, his interviews, everything about him. His swag in life is Iron Man. There's a lot of actors who play a bunch of different roles, but if you watch them outside of them playing the roles, you get to kind of find out what type of personality they are. And you realize... The reason why they were so good at that character, they finally got a chance to be themselves. That's one of the reasons, even, I don't know if you, yeah, and this is such a sidebar, but Cameron's been acting a lot. But, yo, Cameron, I, I, when you did you doing Rico and Paid in Full, we just thought that was you so much that in these other movies where you're acting like a dweeb, like, I, I'd be confused. I'm like, this don't sound, this don't look authentic. I, I'll tell you this. Um, I 
I'm trying to think. Y'all can help me. Will Smith as a person, which character that he's ever played mostly identifies with who we see as him outside of acting? It might be just the Will Smith show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, killing season, man. Come on, right? Right. But 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 think about Will Smith. You think of Will Smith as the guy from I Am Legend? Fuck no. I think of him as just Fresh Prince. I don't even think of him as Bad Boys. If, if you think of him from Bad Boys, I had to kill that, man, because the nigga from Bad Boys, Mike Larry, he not having niggas having entanglements with his girl? Fuck no. You can't have an entanglement with Mike Lowry's girl. You can't have an entanglement with Mike Lowry's girl. Mike Lowry fucking your bitch. Your bitch can't fuck by my Mike Lowry. You not bringing Mike Lowry to no goddamn red table talk. Somebody say Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. Which character... Well, I actually feel like Jamie Foxx is the same Jamie Foxx from the Jamie Foxx show. You think he's like the guy from Pursuit of Happiness? Maybe. Well, I'll say this about about, about Will. When and I don't know if y'all do do this too, right? While I was trying to achieve my goal and trying to get to this point, it was always about yo, how do you get to motivate? You know, I I read The Secret. I uh, um I read you know. I read these kind of self-help books, but I like I figured out self-help books are worthless, kind of, you know. Um, other than sometimes it, it's 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 reinforcement. It can't make you do something. It only reinforces when you hear other people's stories. So I really think it should be mostly just testimonies from other people, because like, if you read the Forty Eight Laws of Power, and you felt like this was new information that you would have never acted like that in any of those situations. I read all 48 laws and I was like, I could see a situation in my life that I didn't know I was applying the law, but out of survival or out of some other instinctual shit, I kind of did what the law said. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's what I was doing. I was applying law 32. I was applying law this and third. The people who think, who don't even think like that, and think you're reading the 48 Laws of Power and be like, oh, let me start to act as the law said, you'll never really execute it because, number one, that's not how you're programmed to think. So if you think you're going to read a rule book and live your life according to that rule book when your natural instincts and actions ain't it, it's not that. So self-help books, I'm not the biggest on it. I think self-help books should only be reinforcements for people like, and I'm progressing this point, Will Smith, he was someone that was very big. If you watch a lot of like, you know, YouTube videos about him, big on manifestation, big on um, you know, hey, listen, um like 10,000 hours um big on the secret. And and I remember like he just had a quote that always just inspired me. He said, "I don't give a fuck Put me on a treadmill versus anybody in the fucking world. It could be the greatest athlete in the world. And if if the, the goal is, yo, you're going to get to whatever your desired result if you stay on the treadmill longer than this motherfucker. He said, before I get off that shit, before that other person, I, I have to die. And it wasn't more about treadmills and shit like that. Don't get your jokes. It, it was really more about persistence. It was about the sacrifices one would take to make it. And I really employed that. When you see, like, I don't, I'm not streaming, and you might be like, Yo, act, you can just pay somebody to do so much shit. Man, I'm going to put those hours in because I dare a nigga in this industry that I'm in to say they work harder than me. Never. You know, the only thing I could always control is hard work. I, you know, I used to say before, I see some people try to, you know, I'm not saying I made up this, this saying anyway, but I see other people say it in different ways, but hard work beats talent when talent works. Talent don't work hard. I've always believed that. One of my favorite sayings. Hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. I felt like I came from a lot of hard work. I felt I developed and I honed 
and I identified what could be a talent and I tried to work on it, work on it, work on it, work on it. Goes back to from goes back to me being in college. I, you know, actually high school when I moved over here, I started. You know, we were really in a shell, like in Jamaica. Like you know, go to school, come home, you're not hanging out, homework, blah blah. We were getting amazing grades, but I was kind of fooled to think that we were gifted. I remember everybody around us would just say, "Hey." Because in Jamaica, they don't give you A's, B's, and C's. They rank you by, like, your rank in the class. So I would always be first. So I'm the smartest kid in whatever class. And the way people would talk about you, it was like God gave you the talent of being smart. And I actually believed it for a while. I believed it until I got to high school in the United States. I thought that God made people dumb and made people smart. And cool, he may have not made me the tallest dude or whatever the most attractive, whatever the case is. But he picked me to be smart. I thought that's what it was. I thought that until, you know, they started putting me in higher classes in college. No, no, in high school. Like, hey, all right, you're on track to be in AP classes and third. And I got bad grades. You know why? Because I used the, I used the thought that I was gifted as being smart. And I stopped working hard. I stopped studying. I didn't realize that while I was in Jamaica, all I did was pretty much study. You know what I mean? Like, we weren't hanging out. Like, I wasn't playing much sports, like, after school and shit. Like, I was just doing a lot of stuff that was conducive to learning, right? And then when I when I stopped doing that, the bad grades came. And I remember when I went to college and I failed my first ever class. I've never failed anything on an academic level ever when I failed my first ever class. And by the way, let me tell you, I started, I was doing so much. I'm getting girls now. I'm doing DJing a little bit. I'm always, I've been tired since college. I've just always been tired because I try to, you know, maximize my 24 hours, but like homework, I was rushing last minute. Yo, a test, a test that people were studying for, for three weeks, I would study for the weekend. And try to be like, yo, I'm going I'm, I'm to ace this shit. And even though they were grading, grading on a curve, you know what would happen? I would be below average. That's how I failed. You know why I, 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 I failed that particular class? Everybody else was out working you. Humbling experience. Humbling experience. It made me realize only hard work wins. Somebody says, uh, that's why you built a life with no balance. I'm going to be honest with you. And and, and this goes into to something. I actually want to bring this up on, on the next podcast. too. So I am going to bring this up on, on not obviously I did a podcast already, but I'm going to bring it up on the Friday podcast. Um, and I got a, I, I got a dope person who's industry kind of for that. And me and him have great, great talks. So hopefully he comes through something. But, um, so that should be lit. I'm excited for Friday. Anyway, um, everybody's having kids now. Allegedly, JT from the City Girls is pregnant, maybe with Uzi's child. Some people are saying Nikki might be pregnant again. I don't know, which I don't even. Maybe I saw that wrong. Maybe I saw that wrong. But, but, but it was like some really gossipy pages. Don't take my word for it. I'm not breaking no news. I'm getting third hand information. Okay. The, um, what else they what else they told me? I looked up Shiggy, him and his girl, like they've been rocking for a minute. I, I like them as a couple. They're having a baby. Uh who else having a baby? Who else having a baby? Like it just feels like everybody, right? Cardi's having a baby. Um Shit, I just seen something else. Young Jeezy and his, you know, I, I think it's the Asian lady that, you know, he, I think he married her or whatever the case is. She's having a baby. So Jeezy's having a kid. Everybody's like pretty much fucking having a child these days. You get me? And, and, and let me bring back the Nikki one because I, I just don't want the barbs. I, I don't know nothing about Nikki. Like, I, I, I think somebody mentioned her name. I, I don't have no proof of that. Okay. Fatboy SSC having a child. 
right? Kylie having a child. Everybody's like getting pregnant right now. And I, I'm probably going to have this conversation a little bit grown up with because the person who I'm, I'm hoping to have on Friday, he has a child. And, you know, he's told me amazingly how much has changed his life. I obviously don't have kids, and I know I get all the memes, you know, act, start a family. But I recently also think, um, and I looked at something as well, um, sorry, I got lost in thought. I look at Stephen A. Smith. I think he does have kids, though. But Stephen A. Smith is an example of someone who has prioritized his work and career over family life. When you when you build a family, you can't give 20 hours to a job. You can't give your life to a job. And I've thought this since before I blew up. I always said, I don't want kids now. And I really, I'm going to stay away from having a family at this point. Even though I'm successful, I'm good, I'm rich already, I'm good. Right? But still, it's like, I I always felt like the moment you have kids, you can't go as hard. You, you're going to be just, your priorities are going to change. You got to do all these other things. And, I'm, and, I, and I look at um, um, Stephen A. Smith, and I'm like, yo, this nigga is always working. He's like in his 50s. And it's interesting because I think, you know, he's one of the, he's definitely a legend, one of the most successful people ever. Um, but I also think about and wonder about his social or mental happiness because that's all that kind of, uh, yo, uh, that's kind of, that's kind of what you have to kind of like, you know, you, you give up certain shit in going for certain shit. Like, for example, and I know I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but even with Nicki Minaj, I think Nicki Minaj having kids this late in her career, I think she made a cognizant choice to not get pregnant before because she was aiming to be that top chick. It came with some rewards, but it came with a lot of cost. In music these days, most Women, and I think Cardi B kicked this off a lot. They're having kids during their prime or even before their prime. They don't care. Cardi B, I feel like she really rolled the dice because there was so much pressure on her. But look at um, who had kids. Summer Walker. You're like 10, 20 years ago, they would tell a chick, yo, the last thing you could do is get pregnant right now. You need to just keep it going. And sometimes some of these people, they have like kind of readjusted their focus because they're like, yo, I like being a mom. So anyway, I, I started realizing that everybody's pregnant. And I was like, oh, shit. And I also did look at myself and I said, yo, act, you might end up like Stephen A. Smith, man. You might be 50, just still pushing and going and being passionate about what you got going on. And by the way, I know you got kids. And, and I'm like, yo. Or maybe something will snap eventually in me that says, "No, nah, it's time for family time." I don't think so because I like the 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 world I live in and the life that I love is all connected to work. Um, but who knows, right? Just give you my honest thoughts on stuff. All right. Beyond that, though, and maybe we revisit that. But 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 but. Uh, Stephen A. Smith did do some interviews, and I had a lot of thoughts about it, but we'll get back into that. I do want to uh, address... I want to address BET. I 